You know, there's three things that you won't hear most golf instructors say, but I'm going to actually take the opposite opinion in this video and talk about how there's some real merit to these. Now, number one, for years, if you've ever played one round of golf, someone has told you that you have to keep your head down. Then we see players like David Duvall and Annika Sormstam, different players that actually have their head go in front of the golf ball. They're looking more toward the target when they hit it. So is it important to keep your head down? Should we not be worried about the head? Well, I think it's actually a lot of merit in keeping the head down. It's not really to do with the head, but it has more to do with your posture. You see a lot of players, what they'll do is get a little bit of steep in the downswing, and then they'll start to raise up. They raise their head, they back out of the shot, they lose their posture, and instead of kind of staying down in posture and staying through the shot, we end up letting our hips go toward the golf ball and our head raises up. It gives you tons of inconsistency, and that's not what you wanna do. So here's what I recommend. Keep your head down. Feel like your nose stays fairly still throughout the swing. When I'm hitting a driver, I want my head to be behind the golf ball, so I'm kind of looking at an angle toward the back of the golf ball. I definitely don't want to be in front of the golf ball like this, where my, my nose would be in front, my eyes would be looking back at the golf ball. I want to be behind it. So I feel like my right shoulder's a little lower than my left. My head is angled behind the golf ball. Now from there, I'm going to make a back swing and keep my head fairly still. I'm going to shift my weight to the left, but my head is still going to stay behind the golf ball, and I'm going to stay down through that shot. Now, if I can do that, that keeps me in my posture. So basically, I'm staying behind the golf ball with my, my head and my upper body, and I'm clearing my lower body left and open. That allows me to stay in my posture throughout the swing. So notice here how my head doesn't really move around a lot. If there's a little bit of movement, if your head twists a little bit, that's fine. I just don't want it to do this and be standing up because I'm losing my posture when that's happening. So my head's behind the golf ball. I'm gonna keep it there the entire time as I clear my hips out of the way. There we go, hit that one, fantastic. Right down the middle there. Not bad for one of the first swings of the day. And you'll notice how I didn't do any uh, of this. Now a second key for that, that really helps you to keep the head still, would be when I'm shifting my weight to the left, I wanna imagine there's something behind me and I'm gonna put my left butt cheek right into that thing that's behind me. I could take a golf bag, you've probably seen this drill before, set it like this, have about an inch between your hips and this golf bag, and when I make my downswing, I'm gonna bump that golf bag and try to knock it over. Another good feeling for that is like your shirt buttons get closer to the ground in the downswing. So again, as, as my hips clear out of the way, my head stays pretty still, and instead of backing out of it and having my head raise up, I'm actually gonna feel like my shirt buttons on my chest are actually getting closer to the golf ball. Now, the only way that you won't chunk if you do that is to go ahead and release through the shot and release that club out in front. So all those things tie in with keeping the head down. I think keeping the head down is a fant fantastic thing to do, but it's more about your posture than it really is your head itself. Now, another thing that you've probably heard is don't swing hard and to keep your feet still. And I think those tie hand in hand together. Well, let me tell you, Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka, Roy McElroy, they're swinging hard. There's no way that you can hit it really to your potential without making an aggressive swing. Now, as long as I'm swinging hard through the golf ball and not at the golf ball, then I can do really, really well. So what I mean by that is I don't wanna swing hard up here. I start swinging hard and all of a sudden I'm casting it and throwing the club. I lose a lot of distance, I lose, I lose tons of consistency. I'm hitting all over the place when I do that. I wanna wait until I'm about halfway in the downswing and I wanna swing hard through the golf ball. I wanna feel like my acceleration is happening after the golf ball into the finish, which is gonna allow me to get great speed and still maintain that consistency. Here's a great tip to make that happen. I wanna be loose when I'm doing this. If I get tight and fast, that's not the feeling that you wanna have. I like to visualize my left hip. I'm gonna be loose with my feet. I'm gonna let my feet move around on the ground. I'm gonna pull my left hip behind this golf ball. And as I start down, I'm gonna wait until my hip shifts in front of the golf ball. And as soon as my hip gets opened up, then I'm gonna accelerate all the way through into the finish. What I don't wanna do is not move my hip very much, try to hit hard with my hands and arms and throw it from up here. So here's the tip. Keep your feet loose. Go ahead and let your hip turn behind the golf ball. Now when I do that, you notice how this knee kicks in a little bit. My heel even lifts up a little bit. That's completely fine. I love that. 
So get the hip behind the golf ball, and then when you start your downswing, as soon as that hip gets back to square and that heel hits the ground, then you turn on the boosters. You turn on the speed. You gotta hit it hard from that point. So let's try one out here again. I'm letting my feet move. I'm swinging hard. Two things you never hear anybody say that you should be doing, and let's see how I do. All right, not too bad there. Another long draw, 310 total distance. I'll take it. Now, the last thing, and probably the most controversial of these things that you won't hear other people tell you to do, shredded my tea there, let me place it real quick, is to keep your elbow tucked. You always hear about keeping your elbow tucked. You don't want that flying elbow. Heaven forbid you do the move that Jack Nicholas did to win 18 majors. That would be pretty bad, right? So most people will tell you to keep this elbow down in the backswing. And I found that most people just don't have enough range of motion to make that move correctly. I've got a great test for you. Go ahead and stand straight up. Put your arm at a 90 degree angle in front of your body. So my elbow is parallel with the ground and pointing straight ahead. Now I want you to rotate your arm outward as much as you can. And you'll see that I have very limited external rotation. That's all coming from your, your upper arm here and then your shoulder socket. Now some people can get to here. If you want that great tucked elbow look, you need to easily be able to get over to here doing that drill to have a full backswing and have that elbow tucked in at the top. I'm really kind of wrenching it in here. Well, what I found most players do when they try to tuck that elbow, they get so focused on that, they never make a turn. So they just kind of do this, keep the elbow tucked in, not very powerful position. Yeah, my angle looks pretty good there, but I'm gonna lose 20 or 30 yards when I do that. I don't mind having that elbow fly. I don't mind feeling like you have a lawnmower and you're gonna you know, pull that string behind you. You're really gonna feel like your arms and your right elbow flies out away from you, gets deep behind your body if, and this is a big if, the first move down is then to start tucking that in to shallow out this club and get it in the slot. I love that. So let that elbow fly. I don't mind at all. Just first move down, let that elbow come in, and you'll see that that really shallows you out. Actually helps a lot of players to get the club on a shallower plane when they make their downswing. So again, here, I'm gonna let that elbow fly, and let's see how I do. Hey, not too bad. Just a little power fade there, and I'll find that sometimes too when I get that elbow higher. I just tend to come a little bit more over the top, but 299, good distance. Not my best shot in the world. I don't necessarily do a ton of that in my own swing, but that's definitely not a game changer. It's not something that you have to do the right way. Now, probably the overarching thing that leads to most consistency is the first piece that we talked about. So many players that I see do two of those moves dead wrong. So they start to get the club steep in the downswing, and then they stand up out of their posture. And I've found that that comes from something that all players do early on in their golf game. They try to release the club in a certain way. Now, there's a move that you need to learn. I call it the anti-roll method. And once you learn this, you're gonna realize why you've been sh sabotaging shallowing out this club, why it's very difficult for you to shallow it out. And you're also gonna realize that because of that, you're standing up out of your posture. And this one move, really helps to fix both of those things. Get this one piece right, you're gonna stay in your posture, you're gonna shallow out the club a lot easier. It has to do with how you've been used to releasing the club. Now, I'm gonna play a preview of the anti-roll method video. All you need to do is go ahead and click the card that pops up somewhere on your screen. If you don't see one of those cards, don't worry about that, go right down to the description below, click the link there. I can't wait to share with you this anti-roll method, help you have a whole lot more fun now that you're gonna be staying in your posture and shallowing out the club. Let's go and get started. So here's the bottom line. If you've been taught to roll the club in the early downswing, that causes the shaft to get steep. And that steep club causes all your problems. It causes you to hit it way behind the big hitters and way inconsistent with your quality of strikes. So you're in the tall grass and the trees and the hazards all day long. Now the great news is this. There's really only two pieces that you need to know to fix all these problems. The first one is we need to learn the proper way to square up the club face. Instead of rolling the forearms and getting steep, there's another way that the pros do this. Once you learn this right way to square up the club face, then you can shallow out from the inside and everything starts to fit together. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the anti-roll method. 
You may also hear this called the motorcycle move or the tour twist, but let's walk through exactly how to do that. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and go kind of in the last parallel in the downswing. So here, I want my hips to go ahead and be opening up. I want my club to be parallel with the ground and I want my hands to be in front of my right thigh. Now, when I take my grip, you're gonna notice that when I do this, the club face is basically straight up and down. So if I'm looking at it from this angle, you'll see the face is straight up and down and my logo of my glove is pointed out in front of me. Now from there,